And I think ultimately what I will want people to take away from this video is, and hopefully it's somewhat helpful to anybody who might know somebody like this. This Chinatown family is going viral right now and it is sparking an online discussion. Yeah, I think this clip was pretty relatable. Let's run it. This is Mu Yi Yu. She lives in a single room occupancy or SRO in San Francisco's Chinatown. She shares the tiny room, which is about 100 square feet, with five others, her husband and four children, and has lived there for the past nine years. San Francisco's SROs are typically about 100 square feet, with shared toilets and showers on each floor. Long story short, there is a Cantonese family from Guangdong living in San Francisco SRO housing, government subsidized. They only make $700 a month. The rent is $500 a month. The dad doesn't really work and people feel bad for the kids because they got four of them. And this is sparking a ton of online discussion and debate. We're gonna get into the reactions, our takeaways. So make sure you like, subscribe and turn on your notifications and let's get into it. All right, David, what's the first main comment that we're going to address? Okay, the first one was like, how can we help? Right. But then the debate sort of went into like, what does help even look like? Right. Is it just a GoFundMe? Is it getting legal help for them to try to move them up along to get a different SRO? What does help look like? Is it give a man a fish or is it teach a man a fish? Right, like I, I guess, for example, if you start a GoFundMe and you give them a couple thousands of dollars, I think it's going to help definitely in the short term. And also, I guess some people were saying, well, if there's any sort of free legal aid that they could give them to push them up into the process of getting more Section 8 housing so they can live in a larger area or or maybe move or something like that, I guess, I guess you could help them move but the truth is that even though they're highlighting this family they're not the only family going through this in oh, SF dude, right now. there's people in multiple cities across yeah. america obviously everywhere else around the world but particularly america's gonna get the focus because yeah. people are gonna be like america's such a rich country why does it happen here? yeah and it is weird to happen in sf which has a lot of money but you have to remember california has a very very high homeless rate of course the second reaction andrew was a little bit more judgmental um hey guys i don't mean to disrespect this family but why did you have four kids knowing that you don't have any income streams and that you're already on government assistance living in a small place yeah yeah i mean listen we don't know a lot about the family obviously i just know from the article that was read and the little reel that was sent out but i mean it looks like the kids are for the most part healthy they had two girls at first and then maybe theory wise they wanted a boy because you know this is like tradition and everything and then the one boy that they got actually turned into two boys because they were twins so now it added an extra person to the family but yes i i mean I mean, it's I, I'm not victim blame. I'm just saying. Dude, moving on, Andrew, someone said, why not just move to a different city? There are so many new cities around America that even have Asian enclaves or even Chinatowns within them. St. Louis, Arizona, Central California, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. I think from this video and the press that they're getting, hopefully maybe someone from some type of like placement program in like Arizona or something can help them out or you know I don't know I mean obviously that that comes with some luck as well but uh I did speak with a professional financial advisor about this video I sent it to them I was like hey man what do you think this family should do and he was like you know it's tough they're probably on some sort of government assistance right now if I could and I was that family and I didn't know that much I would just try to move to a, a state that has lower cost of living. Yeah, and I do think it actually could be complicated, Andrew, because what if San Francisco has really bad, like, uh, housing assistance, but they have really good medical assistance. So now you're making the family no. pick between this great doctor that they love, even though they got to live in this 75 square foot box. No, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Um, somebody said, let's just have empathy for these people, man. I, I mean, I understand, you know, maybe they're not figuring out as best as they could. They could work more or whatever, but let's just have empathy. D David, what, what do you think empathy... I think empathy is a key step, but what do you think that does? Because people are like, well, empathy doesn't put money in their pocket. Empathy doesn't move them out of San Francisco. So, so why have empathy? I think that, first of all, it's an internet reaction because a lot of people are just like seeing something that they relate to. Maybe it's in Cantonese. It feels very visceral. Right, and like, right, right. Um, But I think that empathy is important, but only if it translates into action. 
right? Because now it's really empathy about a whole system, right? This was just a uh, highlight op-ed or personal piece in the media, but that's what the power of media is. Somebody also said, don't judge her. You don't know the details, which is fair. No, you don't, don't know, know the details. Guys, there's actually not that many details. I mean, if they have any special needs kids, they didn't mention that. Or if Physical one of the, disability. Yeah, or if one of the, if the husband or mother can't work for some reason. I, I mean, if the husband can't, because that's what it more sounds like. Um, we don't fully know the details. Or if there's like a secret, I don't know, gambling issue or something. We don't know the issues. So we're only judging this family off of what we know. And I think ultimately what I will want people to take away from this video is not that we're judging them. We're just talking about all the comments and hopefully it's somewhat helpful to anybody who might know somebody like this. Now, yeah. some people in the comments said, hey, I grew up similar to this, or I have a cousin that grew up similar to this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, well, great. These type of discussions are helpful so that it inspires anybody else who can help and give some advice to other people. Um, somebody said, this is America, a oh, shame. Gosh, yeah. the richest country on earth and we can't even provide housing. And some other people came through and said, yeah, if this family was addicted to drugs, they would have got even got treated better because they would have actually got put into the like a drug program. Oh, wow. So like, someone was like, we treat the drug users better than a regular family that's not doing drugs. Uh, that's so, a good point where they were saying like, maybe the kids would get how placed in even a better home if their parents were like on drugs that's crazy man yeah i mean i don't know how the system all works guys but uh but then I, of course other people are like what you shame in america for you think china would be any better this family might just be poor villagers over in china too and at least they got free medical and stuff like that uh entirely entirely possible yeah exactly and i i think i think a question is for like the rich i guess particularly chinese people who live in sf you know who are like tech millionaires right. billion like i guess i'm not it's not your job to help them out but also like what can you do for the city you know i guess if that's your community or that's where you live by i, I would totally know. think about summer camps for the kids like yeah. free summer camps that show them other worlds and get them yeah. into high earning careers or, potentially. Or, or just gets them to meet other families and stuff like that anyways what's the last comment um, other people were basically saying you know i wish they would have moved to canada instead mm. canada has much better social floor systems and somebody said uh yeah, but this family probably wouldn't even have been able to get into Canada because Canada, because of their high social floor system, they have like much different um, barriers to entry mm. for families. And they wouldn't even want a family like this in the Canadian system because they would view it as a drag on the economics. Somebody also said, you know, this was very common in Hong Kong in the 1950s, mm. 60s, 70s, 80s even. But, you know, it's just kind of rare to see in America in 2023. Yeah, I mean, this happened, dude. Poverty is all over the United States. It's all over the world. But yeah, I guess this, this uh, is touching home because it seems very relatable. Like everybody has met, like if you live around the Chinese community or Asian community, you've met a lady like this before you for know? sure for sure i mean i've met many in my lifetime i've even had conversations with them in fact andrew we used to live in a remodeled tenement in new york andrew where some of our neighbors re units were not remodeled exactly and there was like a uh i believe they were from fujian a family of like seven living in a one bedroom not a studio but like a one bed next yeah. to us and yeah i don't know it was definitely interesting moving on to the takeaways andrew I think ultimately it's true that your parents really do have an impact on how your future turns out, statistically speaking, right? Yeah, there is. I mean, there's obviously a lot of stats of saying your parents' income, their occupation, and their locational choices has a huge impact on your life. It doesn't set your life up forever. You can owe everybody. I mean, this is America, land of opportunity. I still believe that 100% where you can still make almost anything of yourself or you can make a lot out of yourself here. Uh, but yeah, it is tough, man. It definitely like puts you in a hole to be yeah, honest. It's kind of like having a good or bad start to your day, right? Yeah. Like the rest of your day theoretically is up to you and the things that happen to you. Uh, but the, the start of your day is important. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why a lot of people use the term breaking the cycle in America, you know, moving on in point number two, Andrew, it's true that like not everybody at least in the first generation is going to make it out of Chinatown, whatever Chinatown looks like to you, whether that's an immigrant enclave or like, like, mm. I guess what I'm saying is not, you know how there are those stories of like these families that come with like $5 and then they start Sriracha yeah, 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 and yeah. they become billionaires. But it's like that, those are more probably like uh, less than 10% statistically probable. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I would say like, that's why, you know, uh, it's important to expose your kid. Like all of our friends who grew up from poor families ended up making 
being very successful and making a lot of money, I always remember that they told me there was a story that somehow exposed them to some other industry or exposed them to some other options. A family friend, right? A or, family or friend. A, uh, or an organization. Or a coworker or someone through the church or the temple or the community. Someone that they saw and related to and got to talk to that actually made it out of their situation. I think that's very important. So, like, I'm not saying, like, you know, church or temple, those are community spaces. Those are important. Um, sometimes there's a lot of hidden factors, Andrew. Point number three, what do you think about these enclaves building comfortability, but also you could say it could be an impediment because you become complacent because you're so comfortable because you're around everybody else that might even be from the same village yeah. that you're from in so, China. So part of moving and part of the most painful part of moving to a community that's not your own, uh, but some of the, the pros of it is that you get thrown into the ocean, right? And it's sink or swim. So you got to figure it out and adapt and it forces you to learn English, right? If you're around uh, most of the English speakers, right? And then uh, it forces your family to go through these hard conversations of your kids adapting. Well, but, trial by fire. Right, right. But, but then if you're in the Chinese community and you can just speak Chinese and still live life there is a pro Relatively and con. Relatively similar to back in the, back in the old There's country, just right? a pro and con, guys. I don't know. I think sometimes the trial by fire method, Andrew, it produces higher upside results, but possibly even lower downside results. And that's what somebody was saying in the comment section. They were like, I grew up in a home very similar to me, you, you, and her family, and I turned out okay. One of my brothers ended up on drugs, and one of my other brothers buried his head into video games and hid from the real world for the rest of his life. Yeah. So, like you said, upside, downside. Oh. Um, um, somebody said, as long as everybody's emotionally and physically stable and like mentally stable, is, is this really that bad though? Like, mm. like, of course it's not ideal, but like, as long as they're together, it's all good. And it seemed like the dad, and I'm not blaming him, but he seemed like way more chill about the situation than the mom did. The mom was really crying and stuff. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, if you, if, if the article tells you that the man of the house, uh, works infrequently, I, I mean, Maybe he's doing other things. Maybe he's the one taking care of the kids, whatever it is. But I guess uh, ideally you would want both people working. But, you know, overall, you know, I know that there's a lot of different opinions. I talked to some friends about this, that they come from more of a poor background or a, or a low income background. And they were just like, man, that doesn't look like the worst situation, guys. They still got a lot right. of time and a lot of chances. I'm not saying that's any situation you would wish for anybody, but they got a shot. They're in America. They're healthy. They're ready to work, and they it got. It didn't look like there was a bunch and, of like alcohol bottles yeah. and like pipes around the room, right? So, so of course, um, but yeah, I mean, if anybody out there knows how to help this family or help families like them, I mean, we through the church, we helped our family, helped certain families that maybe weren't in this quite situation, but a situation similar, similar where they needed help, and it's just like, dude, being around. Uh, meeting other families that come from a similar background that made it in America is priceless, man. So that's what they need to do. To see the reps, to see the examples. Yeah, I'm sure they're doing it, but I hope that they're part of a community and I hope they figure it out. But yeah, again, like this is a common story. So you guys let us know in the comments down below what you think. Like what is advice that you could give this family or what are some stories maybe that you have of your own family or a family that you knew that was kind of starting from a similar situation. So um, hopefully this video was just helpful. Yeah, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Keep it productive. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.